afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeff Nelhouse, and I'm the uh, Chief of Assessment for PARC, and I just want to welcome you to the webinar this afternoon, and thank you for joining us at this late hour in the day. I know many of you, many of you probably had a long school day, and we're really glad you're with us this afternoon. And uh, just to, the purpose of the webinar, as you know, is a, a fall preview, if you will, of the PARC assessments, and especially now that the score reports will be coming out Later on this fall, we want to make sure that you're uh, well prepared uh, for the reporting of the park results. Uh, so today, I'm very pleased to say that we have uh, Barry Ehrlichson with us, and Barry is uh, the Assistant Commissioner and Chief Performance Officer uh, with the New Jersey Department of Education. And we also have Emil Kafara, who's a principal at the Washington Elementary School, also in New Jersey and they'll be doing a lot of the presenting uh, on the call today. Uh, while they both happen to be from New Jersey, I want to mention that the webinar is geared towards all park states, so it's not a New Jersey-centric uh, webinar, even though two of our main presenters are from New Jersey. Uh, Barry will be doing a brief recap of uh, some of her observations and some information from the first year of the park assessment. Some of you may be familiar with that information uh, for others, uh, it may be just nice context for you understanding uh, the scope of the park administration this past spring. Uh, she'll be going through that kind of quickly, but we will have time uh, towards the end of the webinar when you can ask uh, her questions. Uh, Amo uh, will be walking through uh, the, mock, so the score reports, mock-ups of the score reports uh, that uh, will be coming out, especially those score reports that will be for parents. And uh, he'll be talking not only about what the contents of those reports are, but also relating to you about how he, ha he plans to communicate those reports to parents as well. Uh, we're going to wrap up uh, the after Emil and uh, Barry present uh, their portions of the webinar. We're going to wrap up with a description of some of the re new resources that are avail available on, on the web uh, for you and your staff uh, to help uh, understand the reports and to help understand how they and uh, information you can give to parents to help them uh, better support their, their students in school. So a lot of information coming up. And uh, again, thank you for joining. And I'm going to turn it over now to uh, Barry Ehrlichson. Thank you, Jeff. This is Barry Ehrlichson, the Assistant Commissioner at the State Department of Education in New Jersey. I'm really pleased to be here. Um, we are going to review some of our objectives for the park assessments. Park assessments have multiple priorities and purposes. Um, first and most importantly, we're aiming to develop high quality assessments in English language arts, literacy, and math that are based on the Common Core standards for students in grades 3 to 11. Um, as mentioned in the first bullet, PARC will also report on whether students are on track or meeting grade level expectations for college and careers. Too many students are graduating from high school and even are accepted to college but fail to pass the college course placement assessments and have to spend much of their time taking remedial courses which adds to the expense of college and the risk of dropping out. With the second bullet, we all know that assessments are needed to provide teachers, um, students, and parents with actionable data to improve teaching and learning and that data comes from tests. The data that comes from tests needs to be reliable and valid enough to use for a range of accountability purposes, including school, district, educator, and student accountability. As mentioned in bullet number three, it's important that our statewide assessment programs can report growth in performance for students, as well as absolute achievement. As mentioned in the fourth bullet, governors who signed on to PARC did so because they wanted data for their state that they could compare with other states. Um, and also with di districts across states with similar demographics could share best practices. Um, and also number, in bullet number five, generate valid and reliable information to inform instruction and accountability decisions. Um, as you know, PARC uses uh, technology for its assessments, including uh, test questions that have computer interactions and multimedia. Those types of questions are more engaging for students. Um, but the technology, as mentioned in bullet number six, includes um, purposes for increasing student access, providing accommodations, and creating efficiencies in admi administration and score reporting. Next slide, please. Um, in the test administration in uh, 2015, um, we tested approximately 5 million students in 12 states. 
and we should take a moment to reflect on how far we've come in our first year of the assessment. As I mentioned, 5 million students in 12 states uh, completed park assessments. About 1.2 million students took a portion of the test in just one day. Uh, at one point, we had over 200,000 students participating in a test session in a single hour. Um, at its peak, there were a, a million students participating each day, every day, for five days. And really key to all of this in terms of our levels of efforts, um, thousands of hours were contributed by thousands of educators to help develop the test. And all of this represents an enormous accomplishment. Slide number three, please. Um, as a result of our, of our first year of assessment, we have made some uh, changes to our test design or our blueprint. Um, on average, that has resulted in about an hour and a half reduction of test time um, across the various grade levels. You can see in the chart that it, it differs a little bit from grade level to grade level, um, but there is a reduction in the overall um, testing time, or uh, we would call it unit testing time. Um, I want to be clear that these changes do not result in the loss of any types of performance tasks in English language arts or literacy, with the exception of the Algebra 2 or the Integrated Math uh, 3 at the high school level. Um, also, some students will need to participate in a separate field test of the English language arts performance-based test. Next slide. In addition to reducing the testing time, we were also able to change the blueprint um, to uh, have one testing window. In 2015, you know, we had the, uh, the performance-based assessment uh, that was in the early time frame of March and then the end of year window that came later. Um, we are going to be consolidating the testing window into, into one, um, giving schools about 30 days in which to complete their assessments. Um, and that, that, this test window should come and end at about the 90% mark of the school year. Next slide, please. In addition to the uh, testing time and the testing window uh, changes, um, the test design has changes, has also experienced some changes in that there are fewer testing units or sessions. So all, with the changes, all students in grade levels will, will participate in fewer test sessions. Um, the redesigned English language literacy are composed of three units. The math tests are composed of three or four units depending upon the grade level. Um, these changes mean greater uniformity among the test unit times, and they are now actually similar to class times, which uh, poses the possibility of um, the testing schedule being less uh, disruptive to the instructional day. And we're uh, on the road to our first score report. Um, this slide shows you uh, our, our pathway or the workflow, um, which you'll be seeing shortly. Um, as you know, in the spring of 2015, we finished our administration of the first park assessments. Over the summer, we engaged in performance level setting for the high schools in grades three to eight. Um, in August and September, our state uh, commissioners and higher education chiefs came together to review the, the standard setting work and, and vote on the recommended cut scores. And then, as you see, in the fall 2005, the assessment results will be available through the score reports. Next session, slide, please. So the performance level setting, what is it? Um, well, first of all, hundreds of educators from the park states, um, both uh, our K-12 folks and also our higher education partners participated in the process. Um, educators and experts determined what score each student must earn on the assessment in order to, to achieve a particular performance level. Um, states were able to nominate folks to go participate in 12 in-person panels to review the assessment, and they made recommendations that went to the governing board. So you can see that we brought together K-12 educators and post-secondary faculty. We organized them into grade span panels, like high school language arts and high school math, and ultimately their recommendations were, were forwarded to the governing board, uh, which is our state chiefs and higher education partners for their approval. Next slide, please. There are five performance levels in PARC. Um, this represents a, a change for some states, but perhaps not for all. Um, level one is, uh, is uh, for students who did not yet meet expectations. Level two is for students who partially met expectations. Level three, students who are approaching expectations. Level four, for students who met expectations. And level five, for students who exceeded expectations. 
And the, the idea is that um, students who are on level four and five are meeting or exceeding the expectations of the standards of that particular grade level or content area, like Algebra One. And level four and five is considered um, college and career ready at the high school. Um, a college and career ready determination means that participating colleges and universities um, with those and those university students can enter their freshman year without having to take remedial courses or um, in some instances a placement exam. Next slide please, the score release timeline. Um, in the upcoming, you can see the, the work plan is, is mapped to the calendar. Um, in September, some states began to share their high level preliminary results. Um, the process where we are today in the moment in the calendar, at the end of September, states are reviewing and engaging in quality control reviews and preparing score reports. Um, towards the middle and end of October um, and into early November, states will release state-level score reports. Um, at the end of November, um, states will uh, provide school districts with the student score reports. So PARC will send score reports to districts in November and December, and we anticipate that then districts will disseminate them out to families shortly after they are received. And with that, I'm going to turn this over to my colleague, Emil Carafa, who is principal of Washington Elementary in New Jersey, uh, for him to talk about our score reports. Thank you, Barry. And next, we are going to take a look at a couple of the sample score reports. These are the types of reports that parents and families will receive about their students' performance on the 2014-2015 assessment. You could find sample score reports on the Clark website, which is also listed on the bottom of this, this slide. These reports are going to give educators talking points with parents related to district school and students' performance on the test. Could you advance to the next slide, please? You see here the grade six sample report for English language arts literacy. Now, all Clark State, with the exception of DC, will use the reports. In the next few slides, we will go over the information in the report to see how to read the report. And basically, I'm going to explain or discuss with you how I'm going to use these reports with parents and the critical information we'll provide to parents and teachers about their child, about their classroom, and about how these reports are going to help us move instruction and learning forward in our respective states, districts, and schools. Next slide, please. Students' performance on the Clark assessment described on the individual student report using scale scores and performance levels. What we see here is a grade six assessment report for English language arts literacy. The scale score or overall score here, it's shown as a level three, is a numerical value that summarizes the overall level of performance attained by that student. Next to the scale score is a graphical representation of the overall performance. This graphic provides a clear illustration of the five performance levels and how the student's overall score corresponds. The student's score is indicated by the black dot positioned along the range of scores that define each performance level. The range of scores are indicated at the top of the graphic. And looking at the, the score report information about state, district, school, and average results are included in the relevant sections of the report to help parents understand how their child's performance compares to other students and where they fall and, and how they're doing. So if you look, you can see there is a variety of information on this score report which will help give more clarity to how their child is doing. Next slide, please. Below the overall score and the state district score averages, we see how a student performed in each specific skill set that students demonstrate on the park assessment. If you look closely, you'll see we're, we're hitting topics of literary text, informational text, vocabulary, writing expression, and knowledge and use of language conventions. These sections give us an idea of how our students are performing in each of those areas. The arrows indicate if they are below expectations for this area, nearly meet expectations, or 
meets or exceeds expectations in that area. This is giving teachers and administrators and district people information that will help students in their educational journey in each grade level. The legend on the pay on the score report will be very beneficial for parents. Can we go to the next slide, please? The next report we see is an individual student report for math, which is an Algebra II assessment for the 2014-15 school year. This here is the overall, the overall score is level five, which means this student exceeded expectations. And to the right, you can see where the student fell within five at the upper end score. So what we're getting is information within each bar of how our students are attaining the goal they're attaining within the bar level. So it's giving us a very good, clear indication of how our students are doing. Could we please advance to the next slide? So this individual student report in math, this is additional information about your child's mathematics scores. Like in language arts, it's telling us the major content, how the child did in it, where the student meets expectations expectation by solving problems, including rational exponents, writing, interpreting algebraic expressions. It's showing us the other content area of addition and supporting content, where in this area, your child did almost as well as other students who met this expectation. Expressing mathematical reasoning, this is telling us in this area how that your child did better as well as or better than the other students who met this expectation. Students meet expectations by creating and justifying a logical mathematical solution and analyzing the correct and reasoning of others. And the last is modeling and application. Again, in this area, it shows that the child did well or better. Here, these subclaims can help teachers and parents see exactly where a student is excelling and where he or she may need additional support. And again, the legend helps us understand what the arrows are telling us. Can we advance to the next slide, please? This shows the back side of the report, which will give general information to parents about how to start a discussion with their child's teacher and describes each performance level and answers some of the questions about how a report will be used to support the student. Here is important information. Did you, did, if they didn't meet the expectation, if they partially met it, approach expectations, met expectations or exceeded, these are all questions and and information that can help guide parents have a conversation with their teachers. And it's also going to help administrators and instructional leaders have, informa have conversations with their, their staff in order to forward learning and instruction in, in their buildings. Again, these reports are giving us a wealth of information, which is going to help us guide in instruction to make our students better learners and more successful. Next slide, please. Here are, here are the most important things I want parents to know when they receive these reports. What parents need to know is that the PORC test replaced the old state test. They're going to measure how students are performing against new state standards that guide math and English language art learners. So scores are going to look different because the test measures performance against a higher set of standards. Your students are likely to meet them initially, and this year's first score reports will identify where students are going to excel and where they need additional support. The PARC tests are only one of several measures being used. We use multiple measures in order to see how our students are learning, including report card grades, in-class performance, and that are used to determine a student's academic achievement. It does not impact a student's GPA. And the score reports are a valuable tool for parents and teachers. Why? Because the, the report provides a deeper level of information that could be used to better understand where the students are doing well and where they need additional support. We're, getting, we're giving more information in order to help understand the best way to get their child to learn. This helps teachers to tailor instruction and allows parents to support students at home. The homeschool connection with these reports is going to grow immensely because there'll be a better understanding of the score coming home to the parent. Next slide, please. What parents need to know about the score reports? 
The part tests move away from multiple choice questions to allow students to demonstrate a better understanding of what they know and what they can do by writing essays, solving real world problems, reading and analyzing complex text, all critical skills that are necessary when they go into the real world. We're attaching skills that will make them college and career ready as they move forward on their educational ladder. Your child score may look lower this year, as I said before, because the tests measure more complex skills. A low score doesn't mean that your child did not improve or learn less, but instead that the expectations have been raised for students and we will continue to work to raise these students' scores. The first year scores are a new baseline from which to progress and from a measure against moving forward. This is important. This gives us uh, where we need to travel on our educational and instructional journey in our schools, in our district, in our respective states. Next slide, please. So I want to share with you a great resource for educators. On this park site, you could find guides to conversation with parents and a parent guide to the score report that educators may want to share during parent-teacher conferences. I urge you to make sure your teachers are aware of this great resource so they can be prepared and ready to have a dialogue rich in understanding for their students and for their parents for their children to grow educational by using these reports. Now I will hand the next part of this presentation off to Kelly. Kelly? Hi, and thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Emil and Barry. That was wonderful. I'm stepping in here for Jeff Nellhouse. I'm Callie Riley, um, Parks Associate Director for State Engagement, and I'm going to share with you a few new parent resources before we go into Q&A. I do want to remind everybody, before I share these resources, um, if you have any questions, because the lines are not open, please enter them into the chat um, so that we can make sure that we're curating those, we're ready to tee them up to our experts that are on the line. So first, a very exciting thing that I want to show you is that we have recently launched something called understandthescore.org. This should be a great resource, really referencing a lot of what Barry and Abel just talked about. Um, the value of the score reports is that they're actionable. They give parents and teachers the specific information they need to support their child. Um, Park has developed an online resource to help parents take action to support their child's success. And the great thing about this is the site helps parents answer specific questions the score report um, that are on about the score report and includes links to interactive partner resources for parents like Great Kids from Great Schools and Be a Learning Heroes Skill Builder, which I'll preview in just a second. Um, another thing that's really important to note is that you'll see there on that screenshot um, is that you can do a few different drop downs. There's a score report guide, there will be a video um, helping your child more about the test, which really leads you through a walkthrough, almost like what Emil just did about. What do the different parts of the score report mean? And then the drop-down guide with your state. Um, and so you'll actually say, hey, I'm an educator. I'm a principal from New Jersey, from Illinois, um, from New Mexico. I want to see what my state is doing, what state-specific resources were produced. And they'll all be kind of housed there, and you'll be able to redirect to those sites. So a really nice place to kind of get all of your information um, that we can't just put on one single piece of paper. Another site that we actually link to on understandthescore.org is a great resource. Um, many of you are probably familiar with something called Great Schools. Um, I think a lot of folks are, especially as they start looking to see where they want to buy homes, uh, which, which cities they're moving into, um, how those schools are doing. Great Schools has launched something called Great Kids State Test Guide for Parents. Um, parents can find friendly, parent-friendly explanations of the skills and content in each of the test categories in both subjects. Um, contains videos and sample problems to show parents what their child should be able to do in each claim. And they also describe the skills a child needs to master to meet the expectations in each area. If you haven't taken a chance to look at this website, I highly encourage you to do so. Um, it's really great and they'll continue to populate really great content with that um, in collaboration with the park states and also with the Smarter Balance states. I also want to show you something called Skill Builder from Be a Learning Hero. This is also linked to from the understandthescore.org. But again, just giving you a plethora of resources here that you can send out to folks. You can put in your email blast to teachers, to your, your fellow principal colleagues. Um, Skill Builder actually has a search engine with academic resources aligned with the park testing categories in both subjects. 
Um, so we can show that this is shows the smarter balance site, I think, right now. The parse site is going live very shortly. Um, but, so know that you'll see something very, very similar for the park space. Parents can use their child's score to report to locate specific resources tailored to the test category where he or she needs improvement. So again, really getting back to what Emma was talking about, helping figure out how it is that you need to tailor that instruction, what parents can be doing at home um, to help with teachers and with their kids. And the resources are labeled as below, at, or near, and above expectations so that they truly meet kids at their level. So again, providing that consistency between all of the various resources you see about where students are, um, whether or not they need help in speeding up or catching up. Another thing that we want to make sure that we preview beyond the summative assessments is there's a lot of exciting things that are happening with the PARC consortium right now. So on the screen, you'll see um, the new available instructional tools from PARC. Um, so I'm going to go over some of those pretty quickly, and hopefully my animation works out here pretty well. You'll note that the end of the year tests are just one piece of a very large pie. So this is really about an assessment system and what kids, what we can provide to educators and students to make sure that they're truly having a valuable learning experience. They're getting actionable data throughout the year. First, I want to highlight the practice tests, which are already available. Um, they can be found on the PARC website, or the links are there. Um, these are grades 3 through 11 tests. They also include Braille and large, uh, large print as well. All tests also include answer keys as well as a quick tutorial to get you started. So if you haven't taken a look at those, if you haven't shared them with your teachers yet, absolutely encourage you to do so. They're really fantastic resources. The next thing we want to highlight is very exciting. Um, so recently available um, is the K2 formative task. So they are now available for, park, uh, for educators in park space for use in early childhood classrooms but all teachers might be interested considering that the Common Core State Standards and PARC are part of one long continuum from the early grades up through the high school grades. These tools are, um, are to provide educators with instructionally useful information related to how students demonstrate knowledge, and they provide the appropriate level of information to teachers about how to help students. So it's important to note here that these tasks gather information in ways that is invisible to students and are just a part of their daily learning. So these are things that teachers can incorporate into their daily activities with students, um, something that early childhood educators already do. Um, uh, important to note as well that with these instructional tools, they were all developed in collaboration with educators that are in the field. So really saying, what is it that works best for you? How is it that park, the park states can collaborate to create something that's truly useful and valuable in your classroom? Next, you'll see the speaking and listening formative tools. Um, these include videos and rubrics that are now also available alongside the K2 formative task. Um, and they're intended to help educators measure and better understand students' grasp of speaking and listening um, common core state standards in grades K through 12. Um, we often hear about whether or not there are resources available for speaking and listening. You know, they're not part of the end of the year test. But those are uh, standards that educators are really interested in. They're already doing a lot of projects. Um, that incorporate the speaking and listening um, standards. So just another useful piece or another set of tools to put in your toolkit um, to help out, and not just for English language arts, literacy, or mathematics, but really across all grades. So really helpful perhaps in your PLCs, principals, as you're doing planning with your teachers, um, could be very useful. Next, I want to highlight that another thing coming down the line are released items, and we know people are very excited about these. Um, and so this year, PARC will release about one form's worth of items in both ELA and math for each grade, three through high school. Um, the first release will happen in late October and will include items, annotations, model student work at each performance level and scoring rubrics. They will first be available in PDF format in late October, um, and then the technology enhanced items will be available later this winter. This is a great resource to help teachers develop formative assessments in their classrooms, learn more about the types of items on the test, and just get a better sense of overall what each performance level looks like. Um, so if you've done a lot of digging into the PLDs, the different blueprints, we know that there's a lot of information out there. Um, this really helps kind of lift the veil on what the park assessment looks like overall um, and gives more insight into what you can be doing to prepare students to really meet the challenge of the standards. Next, I want to make sure you see what is highlighted overall in this pie. Um, which is the Partnership Resource Center. This is incredibly exciting um, piece uh, that we haven't talked about quite as much, um, but will house many of these tools. 
Um, so the PRC, as we affectionately call it, is a trusted online location for educators and administrators to find critical information about the park assessment design and implementation. So here, educators can get useful professional resources built by PARC, um, by NC educators and other partners. Um, the PRC includes K2 formative tasks that we just talked about, the so speaking and listening tools, technology readiness tools. Um, it will house the released items and associated materials. It currently includes all of the professional development modules, of which there are now five. So those of you that were familiar with the first two on accessibility in Park 101, we have recently added K2 diagnostic and speaking and listening. So that's very exciting. Um, and as well as both user developed and park developed content that will be curated by park experts by experts in the state. Any educator can log in and create an account to look around the PRC. Um, and then those educators in the park state, um, if you're interested in getting greater access to different parts of the PRC, uh, your state will be sending out more information about those. Um, the PRC will be located at uh, prc.parkonline.org. Um, and so I encourage you to take a look at that as there are a lot of really great resources happening. And then the final one we want to make sure that you see is the fact that the diagnostic tools are coming. Um, so the diagnostic tools are launching in late fall of 2015 and include a range of subtests in both reading and math that pinpoint students' learning strengths and needs. Um, the writing diagnostic tool will be available in 2016, so that one's coming a little bit later. Um, the diagnostics are intended to provide teachers results to help them design instructional plans and track student progress. They are available for grades two through eight, um, and in some cases, I think, uh, I believe, for reading comprehension for grades two through nine. Um, reading subtests include decoding fluency, um, vocabulary, comprehension, and a reader motivation survey. And mathematics subtests include comprehension and fluency for grades through two through six. So as you remember, fluency is only for those grades two through six, so we don't have them for seven and eight. Um, so very, very exciting tools that are coming out, and we wanted to make sure that we highlighted them to you as you're thinking about the score reports and everything that's coming this school year. So with that, we're going to go ahead and bring up our experts. Um, we have our chat questions, or our chat box is open right now, um, and we've been monitoring them, and so we're going to take a look, and I'm going to help out with the monitoring. So Barry and uh, Emil, hopefully you are standing by. We are. I'm here. I'm here. All right. So we have a few different questions here, I'm making sure that I get them to the right person. And Barry and Emil, you're welcome to jump in at whatever point you want to. Um, so uh, let's see. A couple of these we may be able to answer. So one question that we're getting is, um, what is the probability that Park assess or Park will release diagnostic assessments for use this school year? Um, we had hoped to re re or utilize a park aligned diagnostic in lieu of iReady. Um, so that is a great question. Um, the park diagnostic tools will be available um, this fall. And so we're looking at a little bit later um, in November slash early December release date. If you are interested, though, I will put in this plug. Um, if you're interested in being a part of one of those pilot districts, all the tools will be available to all um, schools and districts in park states for use. Um, so we're looking for schools and districts that want to use those and give feedback. There's also still opportunities to give feedback a different way by actually being involved um, in additional field testing of some of those field, um, of some of those diagnostic tools. And so if you're interested in that, um, we are happy to send you information and you can just send that to me in the chat box as well. Will this presentation be available for sharing with our colleagues? Absolutely. Um, so we will. We have been recording this. And so we'll make sure that this is absolutely available on the PARC uh, website and then with our partner resources and to the state. Okay. Actually, I'm going to modify this question a little bit to, to um, give this over to Barry and Emil, which is, so when explaining this to parents, it seems um, like a large cloud, crowd would be difficult for parents to understand the reports, and it would be more beneficial in a conference setting. Um, 
so it's asking about when the scores are going to be released in time for most teacher conferences in New Jersey. Um, I know that we're trying not to get into state-specific questions, but I'd actually like to focus on the, the, uh, the first part of that question, which is really, Barry and Emil, I'd love for you to give a little bit of insight into how you're planning on talking about the score reports, perhaps with large crowds, or maybe in parent-teacher nights. Barry, I know that you talked a little bit about what you're going to be doing across the state, so I'd love if you could give some insight into that right now. So hi, yeah, I think that's a really great, great question, and I'd suggest that that we not imagine that this is a one-shot deal or that this occurs um, in only one setting at one time. Um, I'm encouraging school districts to, um, when the when our uh, when the video is available, to play the video that explains the score reports at a local school board meeting, to make it available for principals to. Um, to use with their teaching staff and with their guidance staff. And I think that as many conversations as folks have up front um, before the, the data arrive in school districts and before parents have the score reports, to contextualize the data, understand that it's a baseline, um, the better equipped parents will be to look at the reports and utilize the other types of, of resources. Um, in New Jersey, it is, it is probably more than likely that the student score reports will be mailed home to school districts after November parent teacher conferences. So in the November parent teacher conferences, um, school districts could imagine handing out information about the score reports and about where some of the resources are so that when parents get the score reports, they're already primed um, to develop that deeper understanding. And, and to follow through what Barry's saying, I've already scheduled a meeting at the end of October for Clark Night, and to segue over what Callie said about the road, it's the, it's the Common Core Road, two parts. So we're having a, a Common Core and Park Night at the end of our uh, at the end of the month to bring uh, parents up to date of what's going on in, in in our school and how Common Core and Park. Uh, is understood by our, by our teachers, by our students, and, and what it looks like. So I'm trying to almost set up like a cafe-style kind of a meeting where there will be um, uh, information on the table, uh, samples of, um, of uh, Common Core work, um, computers up where they can actually, again, they've already done it, but they can look at the park uh, sample test again, and have a general discussion about here, uh, the whole purpose for this meeting is to get you ready because we're going to get the school reports are going to be coming out after conferences. And what will happen then is we will focus in either by grade level and individually to have discussions with parents in our school in order for them to have a better understanding and to answer their questions because communication is the best avenue to have parents understand what's going on. And it's up to me as the instructional leader of the building and my teachers be part of these conversations with the parents. We're going to take a close look at the scores and how students perform and speak to parents and give them the opportunity to come in and, and ask questions on these reports. I think that's the part one of it. And then I, I really, truly, and honestly believe that if there needs to be a, a meeting, again, about the park and the score reports, I will hold another one somewhere, you know, in, in late, early spring. So, again, we have a better understanding of why instruction has shifted, why there's all these discussions going on, and the end result is not, it is not taking the part test, but preparing our students to be able to think critically, not only for part, but for NAEP, for ACT, for SAT, for any college or career uh, testing situation they have to take. Thank you. Thanks so much. Those are great answers. So I have two more questions or a question for each of you. Um, and so I'll start out actually with Barry. There is a question about um, the five levels. And so it says, can anyone share the logic as to why meeting standards was not made level three? It would be typical for the middle level to indicate average or meeting expectations. Um, in the graphic, meeting standards appears to be above standards. So Barry, I don't know if you want to offer some insight into um, why the states landed at five levels. and. Um, what what the meaning is there? So, um, you know, in test development and test design, um, those levels are derived from um, a lot of hard work and professional judgment in determining what are called the performance level descriptors. 
Um, so, so Park many years ago sat down with educators from across the state to develop the what are called what we affectionately call the PLDs or the performance level descriptors, which specify inside every grade level and subject area what the student demonstration of mastery would look like at a level one, at a level two, at a level three, at a level four, at a level five. So what does it mean for students to meet the expectation of the math standard in grade three of being able to multiply one digit whole number? So underneath the decisions about these performance levels is that kind of hard work and professional judgment that we developed years ago. And those performance level descriptors are in fact available on the park website. Um, in, the, in that development process, um, the decision was made that level four and five um, be brought together and described as a student who is meeting um, the expectations. Now, in New Jersey, you know, we've had um, three performance levels in the past, so moving to five is a, is a new thing for us. We're really excited about it because it'll allow us to differentiate our understanding of student outcomes in a, in a more granular level than the three levels that we had um, previously. Thanks so much, Barry. And, and well, I have another question for you here, um, which was, oh, I think it's down at the bottom here, making sure that I get the right wording here. So, Emil, as a high school principal, I feel that I spent so much time last year in administering the test that I didn't provide my faculty with the purpose of the test. Who has done that well? Or more specifically, Emil, how did you describe um, the value of this test to both teachers and, print, or, and, uh, and parents in your community? Well, what we did was we looked at the past four, four to five years of doing the shifts within the Common Core and pointing it towards the direction of an assessment. So the assessment, which we knew was coming, was, was a topic of discussion in PLCs, in general faculty meetings, at back-to-school nights, at, at different venues where we could actually have a discussion about the importance of the shift in in learning and the shift in basically test taking. I'm saying it was it was very important to let my my uh, parents understand about the accessibility factors that Park offered that our previous state test didn't. There were a lot of new components involved in this new assessment, so therefore we wanted to make sure that there was an understanding that we were doing everything to see how well your child learned via the accommodation. And the accommodations weren't just for students with an IEP, they were for all students. A lot of the accommodations were all students, and then there were other accommodations that fit the needs of the special learner. So the assessment, we were, we were preparing and setting up and scheduling to do, to do the assessment, but we were always the focus of the assessment in mind and looking to see how our instructional delivery was the assessment happening all year long embedded in our classroom instruction, oral instruction, written instruction, computer tech instruction. What we did was we weaved all of these factors together into our instructional day. So it's not, oh, here comes the test. Oh, and the kids, as the kids did the sample test, they would turn around and say, you know, we did this in class. This is, they, they were familiar with what was going on. And again, I, I, I will go back to the point with scheduling impacted a lot of different uh, time flux in our days last year, but the focus was always on the delivery of instruction and how we could get the students to think critically in a different venue than what they did before. They were very used to paper and pencil, but the children, the 21st century child is, is computer tech, they're digital. So the, we, were, we were playing in their, in their playground, not their playing in ours. I mean, that's what the difference that had to be made to someone like me who's been in education a long time and this message had to be conveyed to parents, to staff, to stakeholders in education. The world is changing. We're global. We're digital. So let's look at it from that point of view, and let's embed that in our everyday instructional delivery and learning. If I, if I could just add um, just a question Please. specifically about high schools and the assessment of the content in our high school coursework. Um, in New Jersey, we had a single comprehensive assessment in the past. That's not true of many of our sister park states that had end-of-course assessments. Um, so in New Jersey, the shift to the park end-of-course assessments was without a doubt a big lift for our high schools. 
Um, it's an important shift. It's one that we made a commitment to probably eight or so years ago when we were talking about how to redesign our high schools to prepare students for college and career. And the way that I talk to families about the importance of, say, an Algebra one test or geometry or an Algebra two test um, and why the need for that level of progression is so that our faculty, our high school faculty, have an assessment that's aligned to the content that they're teaching, which is going to be new for our students in those grade levels and in those content areas. In New Jersey, we have a, a, a very large percentage of our students that participate in advanced placement courses. Um, probably about a quarter of our 11th and 12th graders participate in an advanced placement test um, or in an advanced placement course during the school year. Um, those teachers have had that feedback in the past. They've been able to take their AP data, reflect on their expectations for student learning, and ultimately bring that feedback into their instructional practices. But in New Jersey, we've not had that data in the courses that provide the pathway to the AP or to the IB coursework, the International Baccalaureate coursework. Um, so for students who didn't participate in AP and for the teachers who didn't teach in that, those content areas, we've not given them an opportunity or the kind of data to reflect upon that would improve their instruction and ultimately prepare even greater numbers of students for the rigor of AP or IB. So that's, that's my, my first kind of conversation to high school principals is, is yes, you know, what we're after in New Jersey is preparing all students to participate in th th those kinds of rigorous, even dual course enrollment or dual enrollment courses in, while they're high school students. The second thing that I'd like to highlight is that never before in our professional history has there been more of an agreement about the kinds of skills that students need to have and the kinds of things that they need to know and what good assessment looks like. And so over the next several years, there's going to be shifts in the SAT. The SAT is debuting a new assessment in March of 2016, which looks a lot like the kinds of skills that we're assessing in PARC. Um, tests like the Advanced Placement Test in U.S. History have already made um, major shifts in how they're assessing student learning and what kinds of content they're assessing. So PARC assessments and AP and IB and SAT and ACT, they're converging around a set of skills and knowledge and preparing students for, for one or the other, will, students will be able to lever, leverage that kind of preparation and apply it to all t different types of college readiness assessment. Thanks so much, Barry and Emil. I, and Barry, I have a follow-up question to that that's it's kind of related. So we know that this year the scores are coming back a little bit later, and that's for a variety of reasons having to do with just general first administration of a brand new assessment system. It's a massive undertaking as we described the performance level setting, the data review, there's a lot that's going into it in a very short period of time. So in the future, um, what is it or what's the intent about getting the scores back uh, to, um, to teachers, to principals, to families prior to the start of the school year? So PARC intends to return, school, uh, to, return to uh, districts data about student performance at the end of the school year, that'd be the end of June or early July, um, that then can be utilized in summer professional development, um, refinement perhaps of course placement. Uh, in New Jersey, we encourage the use of, of multiple metrics in those kinds of decisions. So we uh, would encourage folks to consider using PARC in those kinds of decisions, but ultimately it's up to school districts. Um, so uh, we're, we're moving towards that. Um, I, in New Jersey, that'll be two or three months earlier than we've ever been. Um, so we're very excited about being more timely with the information back to districts. Thanks so much to both of you. Um, and we have a couple of other questions here that I'm happy to answer, and a couple of them have to do with um, exemplar answers for writing and math, and then also um, exemplar student responses. Um, and so those will come with those, that item release that's happening at the end of October. So I think I mentioned that there is a plethora of resources that will be available at that time. It's almost like flooding. <laughs> Um, it's, 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 a, it's an embarrassment of riches, I think, in a lot of ways, especially for those of us that have been in the classroom or been in the districts. Um, and so those will include, with, along with the release items, annotations, example student work at each performance level, um, as well as the rubrics 
Um, and so you'll see a lot of information come out and that will be a, a pretty big splash with the item release. So thanks to those of you that asked questions about those. Um, another question that came up, let's see. Uh, one question that came up was actually about skill, build, skill builder that's gonna be available um, is whether or not it's appropriate for useful for teachers or is it geared towards parents only? Um, the way many of these resources have actually been built by our partners at Via Learning Care or at Great Kids is really that they should be useful. Um, they're, they're geared towards parents, but also they should be useful for teachers in the classroom for those of you that are building leaders. Um, and partly just that you could sit side by side and look at those resources together and possibly evaluate what you think parents could use at home. Um, and so please use those as a conversation tool, communication tool, um, and then use your professional judgment about what best you think um, you can use in your classroom or with your fellow or with your colleagues. And then the last question we have um, is about the performance level descriptors listed on the PARC website. It says it only lists information for four performance levels. If PARC continues to use five performance levels, will the performance level descriptors document be updated with all five performance bands? So um, there is a reason why there is no descriptor for that level one. And that has to do with the fact that um, we really very clearly defined those different bands. And Barry, you're absolutely welcome to jump in here. Um, for levels two, three, four, and five, because there are particular content thresholds that need to happen for kids to meet and exceed the expectations in each of those levels. For students that aren't meeting those expectations for level two, as defined in those, in, in those content, um, in their content areas, those students would then fall into level one, so that's why you're not seeing um, additional descriptor language for level one. So hopefully that's helpful to you all. That's a question that I get a lot out in the field as well. And then, John, you have a question about text box size, and I will have to follow up with you about that afterwards. So just want to make sure that you know that we're answering all the questions that come through. And with that, um, I don't know if we have any more questions. It is 5.56, and we would love to give you back any time. Um, so we'll give you another minute to submit any questions. Well, and before you sign off, I want to encourage you to download the Park Guide to Teacher Conversation. So it's in your web uh, toolbar on the right. If you've minimized it, you need to click on the orange arrow um, and share it. Uh, just click on the, the button or the, the hyperlink called Park Guide for Teacher Conversations that's listed in the handout section of your, um, of your web toolkit. The guide was developed in partnership with Be a Learning Hero, uh, who conducted focus groups with parents. And the guide includes questions that the parents are asking about the SCORE report, along with the most effective responses that we've gathered from our park educators. And it's important, and I really want to make sure that, uh, that I reiterate something that you already know, um, that parents trust you, uh, the educators, the most. And that all of you, along with the teachers at your school, will play a critical role in helping parents understand the SCORE reports and use it to appropriately support their children. Um, we hope that these information and resources that we share today will help you do that. Thanks so much, Barry. And it looks like we have gotten through all the questions, and I know that folks are... Um, oh, one last question. Will there be evidence tables for the K-2 teacher? Um, and so there are evidence statements that are up there on the website, and those will also be available on the PRC. I know that the content teams from the states and here at PARC have been loading all of those. So I encourage you again to go to that PRC website um, and root through all those resources. There are a lot of really great ones. Um, so with that, I want to thank everyone on this call. I want to thank Jeff, um, Barry, and Emil. Um, we had amazing uh, state and local expertise here. And as always, please make sure um, to send us questions. You can send questions to questions at parkonline.org um, and, and we'll make sure to follow up with you. And yes, the Park Guide for Teacher Conversations will be available after the webinar. And it's on the educator resource page and so we encourage you to go there. Um, and so it will be available um, alongside these webinar recordings um, but also on, it's already on the website. So again, thank you so much to everyone and thank you for taking time out of your very busy days to join us. Um, we hope you have a fabulous night um, and we look forward to talking with you again soon.